Welcome to this introduction of the self-declaration approach. This approach takes its inspiration from Socrates and his way of doing philosophy and ethics. Socrates went every day to the marketplace, talking with people, all kinds of people, physicians, lawyers, carpenters, women, and even slaves. And he asked them the same questions. What is courage? What is friendship? What is temperance? What is knowledge? What is health? What is wisdom? And the first reaction from all of them was, why do you ask us such simple questions? Don't you know what courage is? What, don't you know what friendship is, etc.? Then, during the conversation with each of them, Socrates made him understand that the answer to these seemingly simple questions were much more varied and complex than they had thought at the beginning. How can we use this approach to teach research ethics and research integrity? Our suggestion is that you start with the following questions, asking the participants, how many of you have the ambition of becoming good researchers, really good researchers? You probably have to wait some seconds, maybe a minute, before the participants start raising their hands. And in the end, probably all of them have raised their hands. Then, you continue to ask them, but what does goodness in research mean? And then you invite them to reflect on this by presenting to them a whole range of expressions from everyday life where the word good is included. A good car, a good computer, a good knife, a good hammer, a good app, a good physician, a good teacher, a good lecturer, a good politician, a good chess player, good heart, good teeth, good memory, a good wine, a good meal, and even perhaps a good cigar, good advice, a good heart once again, a good man, a good person. And after you have presented this list of everyday expressions, you invite the participants to reflect on how you could group these different expressions and why you group some of them together. And you ask them to try to put a name on these different types of goodness. So then you start with the first expressions. What makes it reasonable to put a good car, a good computer, a good hammer, a good knife, and a good app together? What kind of goodness are we talking about here? And you encourage the participants to identify one adjective that should be put before the word goodness. And when it comes to this first type of goodness, instrumental goodness, Rose will reflect now briefly on how this type of goodness um, relates to goodness in doing research. So the first set of goods that we will be putting together would be a good car, a good hammer, a good tractor, a good computer app, a good computer program, a good ruler, a good flask, a good pen. What do these goods have in common? So give your participants at least like a minute or two to give adjectives. But the adjective that you're aiming for is what we call instrumental goodness. Okay? So imagine doing your research without a good computer, without a good voice recorder if you need one, without a good flask if you need one, without a good program 
whatever program it is that you need for your research. Your research is virtually impossible without uh, the right set of instruments that is good set of instruments. So instrumental goodness is obviously necessary for good research. Now take this as a cue to involve your participants in the discussion by giving in some of their responses in their self-declaration sheets. Remember that as a trainer, you would have asked your participants to submit their filled out self-declaration sheets at least a week before the session. With the consent of your participants, you could also include some of their responses in their self-declaration sheets in your PowerPoint. This way, you're able to involve your participants better in the discussion. Uh, with that said, we move to the next type of goodness. So I now uh, bring you back to Jan Helge. Let's then move to the second type of goodness. And we suggest that you invite again the participants to reflect on what makes it reasonable to put the expression a good lecturer, a good politician, a good chess player, in the same group. What do they have in common in terms of goodness? And you ask the participants to come up with suggestions and hopefully after some suggestions you will arrive at the agreement that what makes it reasonable to put these three in the same box is that they are all good at something. Then you invite the participants to identify a suitable label as in relation to the first group where the label was instrumental and again they should look for an adjective. And the ab appropriate adjective here is technical, technical goodness. Then you invite the participants to reflect on how does this kind of goodness uh, apply in research and to help them to come up with more concrete suggestions you could suggest to divide the research phase into three. First you have the search or planning phase, second you have the acquisition and interpretation phase and third you have the communication and application phase. So how does technical goodness apply in these three different phases? Well, when it comes to the planning phase, for example, the ability to identify the most original, relevant, interesting, fruitful research questions require some sort of technical goodness. Similarly, in the acquisition interpretation phase, the ability to sift through huge amount of carefully collected data and come up with plausible, interesting, relevant and fruitful interpretations require technical goodness. And likewise, in the third phase, in the communication and application phase, the ability to write a paper in a good way that is coherent, that makes the message comes out, that requires also some technical goodness. So with those words, let us then move to the third type of goodness. And I invite Rose to reflect with you on this type of goodness. So the next set of goods that we will be putting together would be good lungs, good heart, good engine, a good internet connection, and a good peace process. So what do these goods have in common? As before, um, give your participants a minute or two to, to think of adjectives on how best to describe these goods. But the adjective you're aiming for so what we call functional, or shall we say functional goodness. Now, how is functional goodness relevant in research? For most researchers, these functional goods would be the goal, or, or shall we say also the topic of their research. So a medical researcher 
would want to research on a good heart or the good functioning of the heart or what affects such functioning or good lungs, what affects the functioning of good lungs or how do we develop good lungs. Um, an IT specialist would want to look into how specific devices work with specific type of internet access. An engineer would want to look into the good functioning of an engine or what affects such functioning or what improves such functioning. And um, a peace studies researcher would want to look into what affects the good functioning of a peace process. Now take, it, take this as a cue to involve your participants to give their own examples from their self-declaration sheets or to give simply their thoughts on how functioning, uh, functional goodness is relevant in their research. Um, with that, we go to the next type of goodness. So I give you back to Jan Helge. The fourth type of goodness is in many ways the most delicate and challenging to address and talk about. And it is this kind of goodness that is alluded to in the following expressions. A good wine, a good meal, a good rest. So invite again the participants to try to identify what is it that these three expressions have in common. And the answer is, well, they all three refers to or alludes to some kind of pleasure, some kind of satisfaction. So why is this, or in what way is this kind of goodness relevant in research? Well, it is a fact that research is an extremely competitive field, more even more competitive than sport. You need to be the first out to succeed. To have a paper accepted for publication is extremely pleasurable. To have a paper rejected for publication is a painful experience. Pain and pleasure, or the pain and pleasure dimension, is so important to take into account and address in research. To have a PhD dissertation accepted for defense is a similar experience of great pleasure, or to receive funding for a new project. But what about all these situations in research that every researcher experience again and again in their work as researchers? Insecurity, uncertainty, the feeling of not understanding uh, what should be done in the next period. The periods of boring things to do. The challenge is, in order to become a good researcher, it is necessary to learn to cope with the pain and pleasure dimension in research, to live to cope with and live through the periods of satisfaction, but also the heavy periods inflicted with different kinds of pain and dissatisfaction. Critique is a fundamental virtue in research. But if this epistemological virtue is not paired with the ethical virtue of kindness, then the workplace can become a hell. Everybody is suffering. So we suggest that when you talk about this dimension or this type of goodness to the participants, you should put emphasis on the importance of not neglecting this pain and pleasure dimension or research. So then I give the floor again to Rose, and she's going to introduce you into the 
fifth type of goodness. So the next set of uh, goods that we will be putting together would be a good plan, a good advice, a good work environment, and a good opportunity. What do these goods have in common? As you did earlier, use this as an opportunity to involve your participants by asking them of an adjective that would describe these set of goods. But the adjective you're searching for is what we call beneficial. And therefore, we're talking about beneficial goodness. Now, how is beneficial goodness relevant in research? A good advice is something that a good supervisor gives his or her PhD fellow. A good work environment is necessary for a researcher or any employee for that matter to stay in the institution where they're working in. And, and a good opportunity keeps a researcher and maybe the staff employed and thereby making research possible. Simply put, beneficial goodness is necessary to keep research going. Now, use this as a cue to involve again your participants by asking their inputs from their self-declaration sheets on their own examples and their perspectives on beneficial goodness. Um, with that, we go to the next type of goodness, and I give you back to Jan Helge. Now, finally, we are going to talk about the sixth and last type of goodness, which is alluded to in the following everyday expressions. A good heart, a good person. And again, you should invite the participants to reflect on what kind of goodness is it that these expressions allude to. And probably, this is the easiest type of goodness to identify and label. Namely, we are here talking about moral goodness. And then the next question to the participant would be, what is the role and relevance of moral goodness in research? What is the relevance of moral goodness to become and remain a good researcher? The short answer to that question is that Moral goodness is necessary for trust to prevail within the research community and also that the community at large have confidence in the research community. This is Rosemary Bernabe. Thank you for listening and I hope this is useful for your training. My name is Jan Helge Solbach. I hope you have enjoyed this introduction into the self-description approach. The main objective of this approach is to show participants that when we are talking about the ethics of research, when we are talking about research integrity, that is, when we are talking about moral goodness in research, it is important to take into account the five other types of goodness as well. Because in order to become a good researcher, moral goodness has to be combined with instrumental goodness, technical goodness, functional goodness, hedonic goodness, beneficial goodness. I wish you good luck as trainers in research ethics and research integrity. <laughs>